we're here in front of this work, uh, these uh, two drawings that uh, Linda has done, where there is references to uh, the work of Joe Bart. And Joe has been a uh, big influence on your work, as well as you mentioned uh, David Bellberger's work is also another influence. Can you talk a little bit about uh, Joe's influence on you? Yeah, um, I mean, well, I love Joe's work. Um, and I, I'm, I don't do so many domestic animals, but um, when I was, I grew up in a small town and really was, had no art education or uh, experiences with art. And I went to the um, School of the Arts and we did a field trip day. And as part of the field trip day, I was probably 15, we went to Joe's foundry and they did a pour and he spoke. And so he was the very first real artist that I that I'd ever met, and like what a, what an artist to me, you know, he had such an impact on me. And I was as a child, I always loved drawing um, and painting and what animals. So I did a lot of wild cats, tigers, and lions, but I also did Canadian animals like bears um, and wolves and fox. So. When we went to the foundry, I was completely enamored with his work. And in my job working at Sass Sass Arts and working with the collection, I get to work with Joe's work. I get to work with other artists like, you know, Nick Sikansky's work and and, uh, David Thawberger's work, who's another other artist that, of course, I admire so many Saskatchewan artists. And I think, like, compositionally, I'm quite influenced, uh, my paintings are influenced by David's work, David Hubbard's work. He has similar compositions with, like you know, characters. yeah, with animals uh, often. The architecture sits centrally located, I love balance in the foreground, and then there's often things in the background that have, a, you know, are in the distance, and that's the way that I work as well. I like to have this dynamic kind of tension between foreground and background. Um, So in this painting, um, I've got geese walking, um, which they do during a certain time of the year when they're nesting. Um, And then in the background, I have the um, refinery and um, that sort of urban uh, industrial um, element that's really a big part of Regina. We've kind of grown around it. It's not on the outskirts. It's really um, on the edge of where we live. Um, and so, yeah, I think this piece feels very thawberger esque to me, mm-hmm. which I hope he appreciates. And then even with the pelicans, um, you know, I have again this foreground background tension with the jet streams and kind of pulling them. Well, of course, they're very far in the background. They become pulled forward by the way that I've sort of framed the birds in between those jet jet streams that are crossing. You know, I started this work before COVID, so when there were still planes in the air, now now we're seeing more planes in the air again, but um, yeah, uh, in the distance is the Conexus Art Center, which is where the Sask Arts collection is stored. So I spend a lot of time in that building and I also, it's taken from the path as you walk from the building to the University of Regina, which is a path I walk a lot um, and where I see coyotes. So yeah, everything kind of interconnects. Well, and Isu, yeah, it's great to see like how you're pushing your subject matter into the foreground, much like David Thalberger does. And like you said, and then there's like usually like an element of landscape or something in, in the in the background. So yeah, it's, it's nice you can see that in a lot of your work. Mm-hmm. So it's a really nice reference. But I also recognize the reference to Joe, not only um, in you referencing his images of his cows and how the Mackenzie Air Gallery, but also the way you've approached some of the sculptures where you've collapsed mm. um, the architecture, as Joe would sort of refer to the form, the perspective of the, the animal. So when you come to the side of it, it's, it's actually uh, a flattened yeah. object. It's a solid form, but when you look at it in a certain angle, it has a, a full perspective of, of its yeah, this piece is uh, definitely becomes quite um, 
bulbous as you move around it and a little bit um, absurd, I think. Um, there's a certain angle if you stand in front of it where it looks completely believable as a rabbit um, and is a familiar form that you understand and looks, you know, realistic. And then if you just move outside of that one point at all, it starts to change and um, become this kind of like a slightly comical, I guess, um, form. I never really know because I draw these flat on fabric. Um, and you can see with the back of um, Leopold here, I drew the legislative building and I never know until I cast them exactly how the, f the silhouette form is going gonna, is gonna to influence the, the drawing, and how the, how the, if the drawing is going to keep its integrity or if it's going to become much, much more abstracted. So um, this, I actually quite like the unpredictability of that. I'm a very kind of controlling, <laughs> controlling, controlled person, precise person, and you can see that in my drawing and my painting styles. But with the sculpture, there's this, this method of casting which I developed really does push my comfort levels in terms of creating objects. And I really like that. I'm definitely going to be doing more of this casting. It's a challenging um, way to work. You have to work very fast, and I've discovered, you know, when I created the gophers, I could create those drawings so much faster. Um, you know, I could do the drawing front and back on the two pieces of fabric in about like an hour and a half, two hours, and then I would cast them, and you can see how strong the drawing is, because when it, it's fresh, it embeds better into the uh, cement. Um, but these drawing, these, this rabbit took me much longer to draw. The bigger the sculpture, the longer it took. And then maybe I waited a bit before I cast it because it's more difficult setup. And so it's a little bit, it's a little bit lighter. So yeah, and then this one I just wanted to mention is it's called McIntyre. It's named after Greg McIntyre who passed oh, about six years ago, I guess. And so it is a tribute piece to someone who I thought was kind of iconic in the community. And there is um, his bicycle on the back. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a favorite kind of sentimental piece for me.